Hello, everybody. Matt Lobach here, Dairy Account Manager. I wanted to go over a couple things here with some basic agronomic alfalfa information for uh, everyone, especially as we're getting into the alfalfa planting season here. First off, before we go out and we do anything with the fields, make sure you're asking the right questions so we can make sure that we're planting the right alfalfa on the right soils there. Uh, make sure you're asking things, you know, simple things like do you, plan to, do you intend on planting the alfalfa on poorly drained soils or do you know what seed treatments are uh, applied to your alfalfa seed? What was the previous crop? How much trash is out there? These are all questions that you need to be asking to figure out so we can have the greatest success rate when we go out and we plant the alfalfa seed. The other thing that we need to work on, and this is a big, big part of planting alfalfa, is the seed to soil contact is very important. Uh, I like to consider the seed to soil contact with alfalfa as the same as corn. We got to make sure that we get that seed packed nice around the, firmly around the alfalfa seed so that we have the uh, proper moisture and water there for the seed to germinate with. So a couple things that we need to look over here is make sure we have the ample soil moisture is key to the fast germination there and seeding at the proper depth. Alfalfa needs to be seeded at a quarter to a half inch depth and proper seed bed firmness. Okay, we need to ensure the good seed to soil contact. It's no different than being with corn. So we have to make sure that we have a firm seed bed. And if we look at kind of the how the particulates of the, the soil particles are around the alfalfa seed, if you look here, the little brown circle oval there is the alfalfa seed. And we want to make sure that we got all that uh, soil particles and the water that's attached to those soil particles around the alfalfa seed and packed in there tightly. This way, you know, you look at the top quarter, top half inch of soil there, we don't want that water evaporating away because we need that water to be absorbed by the seed so the alfalfa can germinate quickly. So make sure we've got a firm seed bed there. And one of the things that I like to utilize when I'm looking at how firm the seed bed should be is making sure we go out there and walk the, the soil, walk that firm uh, seed bed. So when I'm looking at this here, the thing I always talk about is this three-legged wheelie that came out of North Dakota State University. And if you walk out there and you can see your heel and your sole on your footprint, the ground's too soft. If you cannot see either your heel or your sole, then the ground is too hard. But if you can see your heel, but not your sole, it looks like you're about right there. So your boot should sink in about a half inch, give or take on there. So it's kind of just a good little reminder of go out, walk that, and see what's going on there. And if you look at the picture here, you can see a lot of things that happened when we didn't have poor seedbed preparation. And this one here is a prime indicator that this ground is probably not firm enough for the uh, for this alfalfa to be planted in. Because if you look on the side there, you can see the tracks that the duels of the tractor made there and how that packed down, and that's where the alfalfa actually germinated well and is growing well. But the rest of the soil here, you can see that that was probably too fluffy. We didn't get the pack around the alfalfa there, around the alfalfa seed, and we didn't get the, the ability for the alfalfa to germinate quickly and grow. So this kind of sums up here what it looks like for that uh, seed bed, what we need them to look like. So remember, a firm seed bed. Uh, I always say roll it, seed it, and roll it. Make sure you get it packed in there. <clears throat> the other thing is make sure we've got the proper lime and make sure we've got the proper pH for alfalfa. Uh, there's such a small window where a lot of these nutrients are available to the crop, so we need to make sure that we're at the optimum uh, pH for alfalfa, which would be in the mid to upper six range is what we're looking for. So go out, pull a soil test, and get a pH test on that and see where we're sitting with your uh, pH on the soils. And finally, the other thing is we got to remember is how much actual nutrients are removed by alfalfa. So when you're looking at the alfalfa removal rates, and this is based on uh, pounds of removal per ton of hay. So if you bale up one ton of hay off of alfalfa, you're going to pull out approximately 16 and a half pounds of phosphorus, 68 pounds of potassium, and 35 pounds of calcium. So think about that when you're out there on your first crop hay and you're pulling three, four, five tons per acre off of that field. Uh, take these numbers and multiply it by the three, four, or five. There's a lot of crop removal for phosphorus, potassium, and calcium are the big ones. But don't forget magnesium, sulfur, and boron, and zinc. So make sure you're paying attention to those. So alfalfa needs the proper levels of P and K for uh, for uh, the yield that uh, you're going to have with it there. So if you're intensively managing your alfalfa, you look at the amount of phosphate and potash that are needed. 80 to 120 pounds per acre is what needed in the soil test. So make sure you're paying attention to that. The other thing to remember with alfalfa is alfalfa is a luxury consumer of both these items. So if you go out there and you apply 400 pounds at the beginning of the season and expect it to be there all season long, it will not be there. So make sure you do a split application, maybe after first crop and then again before your last cutting of the year. Uh, that gets back to, like I said, alfalfa is a luxury consumer of uh, phosphorus and potassium. <clears throat> Some of the guidelines when you're looking at soil fertility, uh, depending on where your soil tests are for P and K and parts per million, you're going to need to apply, you're going to need to get so much phosphorus and potassium out there. So in essence, you're going to need 130, if your parts per million test of your phosphorus is two, you're going to need about 130 pounds of phosphorus out there. If you actually go to the actual product applied, uh, you can look at the amount needed there. Same way with potassium, you know, if your, if your potassium test is running 90 parts per million, you're still going to need an actual 120 pounds of uh, potassium out there in the soils. So the biggest thing I can encourage you to do is go out, pull soil tests, see where your P and K levels are. Also look at other micronutrients. Make sure you check your pH there so that we have the pH in the adequate uh, zone. If you do need the lime, it is recommended to do the liming at least the fall ahead of time. 
Uh, usually the spring of your seeding is probably a little bit late for that. But try to get all the pH set up the year before you go into uh, alfalfa planting. And then when you do get ready to plant, make sure you roll that soil. Make sure it's firm out there. Go out and walk it. Most of the stand failures I always see are because of the seedbed preparation. So go out, roll that seedbed, make sure it's firm. Get that alfalfa planted at a quarter to half inch. And then roll it in, pack it in, make sure that we got nice firm seed to soil contact on there. And with these guidelines, I think you'll have yourself a successful alfalfa seeding for this spring.